I spent the last 100 days in fighting humans to stay at my lovely little resorts, and then squeezing them dry of all their hard-earned money, all while depriving them of their basic needs like food, heat, and a place to relieve themselves. Did I scam people? Yes. Did I overcharge all of the guests? Yes. Did I make a deal with a god to ensure my everlasting power? Who knows? I'm pretty sure what I did was illegal, but anyways, watch me go from a stinky brown bear to a multi-millionaire. Why can't I ever fall asleep on time? I'm gonna be so tired tomorrow. Mom's gonna kill me. Hank's hands got very cold all of a sudden. His forehead felt heavy with a crushing pressure. A dark figure with glowing eyes stared from far away. Weathered stones and drywood surrounded it. Suddenly, a blinding jolt of lightning illuminated the sky. Thunder cracked. A shriek pierced through the air. There was no one there. Everything felt dark and silent again, except for the rain. Forget I said anything. Sleep is overrated. I woke up in some sort of void with nothing around me other than a disembodied voice that just so happened to know the controls. The voice told me to look for a bed and go to sleep, but I was very skeptical of this entire situation and for obvious reasons, because what happened next was absolutely terrifying. After finally laying down in this weird void bed, I then actually woke up in my bed, but it didn't take me long to get distracted. I left my room and went to go explore the rest of the house where I ended up finding my mother. She didn't really have much to say other than to go wake up Annie and Will, whoever those two were. I went to go check the room next door and we were already getting robbed. It turns out that these weren't criminals, they were my siblings or friends that lived with my mother and I, I don't actually know the relationship I have with these two, all I know is that they were some sort of family. Annie was very cheerful, but Will was just an asshole. He insulted me at any opportunity that he could. Anyways, I grabbed them and we all went outside. We met up with mom at this ancient looking statue of a deer that had some very ominous music playing in the background when you stand next to it. She said we had to go to a place called Black Moss to get some alligator weed, which I was very excited for. So we walked past the fence and into Black Moss. The three friends found themselves farther than they'd ever gone before. That's the soothing meadows and the quiet streams of the thicket. Margaret would have known that this was not exactly their first adventure. Annie, the Calarian dog. Brave, but clumsy. Will, the poor Will. Grumpy on the outside, but surprisingly, even more so on the inside. And Hank, the brown bear. Cheerful and curious. But maybe a little concerned about the promise he made back home. No, Mom, I'm definitely not going to wander too far into the, in, in adventurous fashion. I promise. While searching bushes and gathering what we needed to gather, we heard a loud-ass tire screech, so we all decided to go check it out. We ended up in a place called Timber Crossing, where we came face-to-face -face with Finn the Shark. The strange shark had a shiny, bouncy exterior and wore cool sunglasses. A little gray speaker box was strapped to his neck, it blurting out nonsense. It reminded Hank of Will's TV. Next to it, a little car had a big advert for something called Pond Voyage. Or Pond Voyage. Nothing weird about it at all. It turns out that Finn is just a minimum wage employee, but boy did he say some enticing things that just, that just drew me in. Basically, he let us know that he is an employee of something called Pond Voyage and wants to help us become rich by turning this place into a fine tourist establishment. All we had to do was gather materials, rebuild some of the rundown buildings nearby, and convince humans to stay at our way below average lodge. So I got started. I was told by Will to go look in a place named Sawdust for an old friend named Tony the Beaver to learn how to build shit. I found him in a pretty abandoned looking lumberyard and after talking to him it turns out Tony and my mother have something going on between them but I, I pay no attention to that. He told me to go gather some plywood planks nearby and meet him back in Timber Crossing so that's exactly what I did but searching through all these piles was going to get very annoying. Once I was back Tony had me clear out the shack of all the junk and broken shit that was inside it and then fix it up. Once the workbench was ready to go, he gave me a recipe for a shabby pallet bed so now I could get down to business. I didn't exactly know what I was doing at first, but eventually I figured out that certain items can only go in certain rooms, so to place a bed down, I would have to make a bedroom first. Ignoring all the broken floorboards and stained wallpaper, I had made my very first room and I was very proud. 
even though it looked like somebody was actually murdered inside. Afterwards, Tony taught me how to make a front desk so that I can manage and keep track of all the guests that will be coming through my lovely resort. Once everything was set up and ready to go, I let Finn know that we were ready for business. The time had come to unleash something both intriguing and unfortunate on Silver Valley. People. Those dewy, mostly hairless creatures were a controversial topic in the neighborhood. Some thought they were godly beings forging the world with their magic and machines. Mostly because they left behind food and other stuff like that other stuff that animals liked. Others would throw a fit of rage calling them unqualified harbingers of doom. A bit dramatic if you asked Hank. All he knew for sure was what his mom always said. Keep your distance. So much for that. On day three, Finn made sure that I knew I was going to be making little to no money whatsoever. But that's okay because I now had some actual quests to get done. The first being to get my dinky shed prestige to level two. But since I didn't know how to do that, I just accepted my first guest request. Honestly, I'm just as surprised as you are that anybody would want to stay in this hellhole. But if it's making me money, so, 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 so be it. Pause. Here's a quick set of rules for how this game actually works. The guests have certain expectations for their room, like comfort and furnishings and hygiene and stuff like that. And the better the expectations, the better the review they would leave. And then better people would come and you'd get more money. Afterwards, I began exploring, and across the street was another rundown building with a raccoon named Took living behind it. Now, out of all the critters that could possibly live in this forest, this guy was going to be the one I'd be buying all of my furniture from from now on. But first, he wanted a snack, so I went to go look for a sandwich for him. I ended up just stealing one from a human named Oliver nearby and gained access to Took's Garbage Emporium, where I could buy all sorts of furniture like lamps and carpets, all for a currency of some trash, which, in the animal kingdom, have been considered valuables. Took had another task for me to do, but I was getting real sick of reading all of this text, so I just kind of skipped past all of his dialogue and got a quest that told me to talk to Tony about the little travel kiosk, which I assumed was the other abandoned building right below me. As I was about to talk to Tony, I took the time to admire my very first customer. Tony pretty much just told me to go fix it up, but he also said that it would require a few obscure items. Those items being a book on spelling, an old computer, which I had already found, and a pen on a string. Before I went looking for the other two items, I wanted to spruce up the shack a bit, so I bought some furniture and just kind of threw it wherever. Doing so, I got my prestige to level 2, so I learned that the more shit that I got in my place, the better it is. I turned in the quest for Finn and he gave me a new one, complete to stay for one single guest. Since I already had a guest and that quest would be done by tomorrow, I just began looking for the other obscure items. I found the pen on the string after digging inside of Oliver's house and going through all of his belongings, and I just kind of grabbed it, because who the hell is going to stop a fucking bear from stealing their shit? Because I know I wouldn't. I know I wouldn't. Afterwards, I finished the day by building another room. I continued searching for this book on spelling everywhere, but I just couldn't find it. But eventually on day four, I went home and I found it in a shelf in Annie and Will's room. Now that I had all three items, I was able to successfully rebuild the kiosk. Afterwards, Took let me know how gracious he was by adding more items to the garbage and by putting in a good word with Big Cheese, whoever, whoever the hell that is. Tony then let me know that there's nothing more he can teach me and fucked right off to his lumberyard. Once he was gone, I got back to building and adding more rooms, and I ended up spending way too much time on it, but I ended up noticing that time doesn't move when you're building, which actually really sucks. Afterwards, I remembered that back when I stole his sandwich, Oliver had a quest for me to do, so I went to go talk to him, and he just wanted me to deliver an envelope to his friend Beanie. So I went back to Sawdust, climbed all the way up a watchtower, and gave Beanie the envelope. Turns out, Beanie's real name is Sabine, and all that was in the envelope was a final page of an atlas the two made together. As a reward for coming all the way out here, she ended up giving me a compass that grants me access to a map of the area that I am currently in. On day 5, I, I gave a little visit to my guests. Watching you sleep, little lady. Just be careful. I might get a little grisly. Here, let me hit the lights for you. Good night. And then talk to Oliver. He was super duper happy that the Atlas was finished and said making it with Sabine was the most fun he had ever had in his entire life. But then he just fixed it up and gave it away to me without a care in the world. It, it grants me access to the world map. He also gave me a couple of bus signs and told me that there are bus stops all around the map and that if I repair them, he'll drive me free of charge. From this, I got a new quest to repair the bus stop in Sawdust, so I did that right away and then used the bus to travel back home. After all of the Oliver and bus nonsense was done, he granted me access to his shop where I could buy more bus signs if I needed. Then, out of absolutely nowhere, Annie screamed my name at the top of her lungs, like, 
like just asking where I was. And I was just right across the street. If she, if she looked across the street, she could probably see me. I went over to see what the hell that was about and she reminded me that mom told us to go get alligator weed three days ago, three entire days ago. We've been missing for three whole days. So I obviously rushed back home and needless to say, mama was pissed. Honestly, she was much more worried than upset and just told me to go rest and to not forget my hat next time I go out, just in case it rains. I went to go take my nap, but just as I was about to crawl into my comfy, comfy bed, a fucking rat busted into my room. I figured out that he was Big Cheese, and he told me to meet him at the dump down in A24. I was gonna head to A24 right away, but as I was entering Timber Crossing to get to A24, I was stopped by an old lady named Barbara. She basically just said that I was doing a great job so far and to keep on doing it. I, I honestly already didn't like her. She, she seemed too nice. Anyways, I went and turned in the quest to Finn, and he told me that he was going to go to another location in A24, and to use the sign nearby from now on. The sign had quests that were just to keep upgrading the shack, so I most likely won't be mentioning any of these from now on. Later into the night, I went down to A24 and met up with Big Cheese and his associate Claire. He told me that he needed help finding another associate of his named Wade back in Black Moss, but I decided to put off that quest for now and go exploring. After a bit of exploring on day 6, I ended up finding Finn outside of an abandoned motel. After talking to him, he just told me to go fix it up, so I did and began making some rooms. I ended up building 6 rooms and furnished them all till they were at a score of 5 comfort and 9 furnishing. Afterwards, I finally decided to go look for Wade, so I made my way to Black Moss. Once I was there, I was greeted by an alligator named Charlotte. She said she knew where Wade was and invited me inside. Inside was Wade, obviously, and a tadpole, I, I think, named Twiggy. To get Wade back, Charlotte told me to gather 7 charcoal lilies, but I didn't want to, so on day 7 I went back to Timber Crossing and added 2 more rooms. I spent the majority of the day completing the quests in Timber Crossing. They gave me a sweet pair of shorts and some trail mix that makes me walk significantly faster. After that, I went back to Black Moss to finish gathering the charcoal lilies for Charlotte. Charlotte. The half-tailed alligator struck Hank as someone who was good at trying to be scary, but didn't always stick the landing, as evidenced by Twiggy, her tadpole buddy, who by the mere tiny presence debunked any worry that Charlotte would actually try to fit Hank into her big boiling cauldron. That's the hope, at least. Wade and I then went back to the dump to tell Big Cheese what happened. The first rule of garbage. Garbarchaeol the first rule of Garbarchaeology is the cream always rises to the top, so make sure you dig deep down. Claire's obviously the right hand of the operation. Her skill at finding the best stuff is only matched by her loyalty to the old rat. Anton, the boss, seems like a real hard ass. But I guess you gotta be in his line of business. Wade would be close to the left hand of the sting, useful in a limited capacity and only under strict supervision. At least according to Anton. What a strange bunch. Once he had Wade back, he granted me access to his grinder where I could turn old furniture back into the materials that were used to make it, and he also granted me access to his dump where I could gather all sorts of new materials like copper plates, glass panes, and electronics. I then went back to the motel and assigned some guests to their rooms. Once that was done, I talked to Finn and he told me to go build a bathroom for the guests, so this was like a whole new concept for me. For this bathroom, he ended up giving me a few new recipes, a crappy toilet, a rusted sink, and a wooden shower. I built the bathroom on day 8, and then Finn told me to build a distillery as well, because humans just love to wash down their sorrows with alcohol, especially when they know they have a car they can drive outside. Once the distillery was up and running, Finn told me that Pond Voyage would sell different recipes throughout the game that would increase the expectations of the rooms I could build, the first set of recipes being stuff like level 2 beds and wardrobes. After buying all these new recipes, I went back to Timber Crossing and demolished 3 of the level 1 bedrooms I had and used that space to make 2 level 2 bedrooms, increasing their comfort from 5 to 13 and their furnishing from 9 to 11. But apparently that wasn't enough because all of these new guests now want either the comfort or furnishing of their rooms to be at like a 20 fucking 3. Which I think is just outrageous. Like, like you get to, you get what you get. Deal with it. Afterwards, I went back to A24 to manage the motel, but I decided to talk to the possum named Gus that was walking right by. Oh, in the middle of the desert, in a rundown metal shack, lived Gus, the most handsome possum in A24. Seemed like digging through the junk. Nope. Seemed like digging through junk was the main activity around here, and he was no rookie. Although by the looks of it, Gus's primary concern remained his charm and driving wheel. He seemed to hate receiving compliments, so I decided to be an asshole and just keep on complimenting him. 
This caused him to literally disappear right in front of my eyes. Like he just, he just vanished. Later into the night, I went across the street and met a turkey named Ipswich that was running a gas station. He ended up telling me to go restore the diner to the right of the motel, so I did exactly that. I spent about half of day nine decorating both the motel and the shack. This allowed me to finish the quest I had for Finn and caused him to move on to the next place. This also caused Barbara to have a quest for me. When I went to talk to her, she basically just rambled on about how this place used to be amazing and full of people, and then she just wandered off again. Like, there was no- she didn't ask me to do anything, she just wandered off again. Right after she wandered off, Sabine came out of nowhere to tell me that the path to High Lake was cleared and now I could go there. I ended up spending the rest of the day gathering materials in the dump. On day 10, I walked up to High Lake to see what all the hype was about, and this place had food growing everywhere, and the farmhouse here was just huge, it was insane. I cleared it out right away, and then I met a, a, a goat, I think it is, a goat, or so, uh, named Julia. Always caught by surprise, Julia the goat was only... Always caught by surprise, Julia the goat was the only remaining resident in this huge estate. She seemed very invested in her vegetable garden, but the rest of the property didn't concern her as much. The intense aroma coming from her house signaled a knack for cooking, a hunch reinforced by Hank's rumbling tummy. She told me to go fix up the farmhouse, so I went out front and found Finn, and he told me to do the same thing. I repaired the farmhouse and was told by Finn to go talk to Sabine about building a camp right next to it, but first I went to go talk to Julia. I told her that there were humans and shit back in the valley again, but she did not believe me and was fully convinced that I was just here to steal food. The only way for me to be able to convince her was to find sage for her in a place called Dark Grove, but honestly, I, I didn't want to, because screw her for being so untrustworthy. I decided to put off Julia's quest for now and go talk to Sabine. She told me to go repair the campsite near the farmhouse, so that's what I did. After I did that, she gave me a recipe on how to build a campfire and told me to go build one, but I ended up putting it off and spent the rest of the night fixing up some of the rooms in the shack. I spent the morning of day 11 continuing to make the rooms better in the shack. I lowered the number of rooms to 3, made them much bigger, and stocked these rooms full of furniture to increase its rating. By the time I was done with all the rooms, Bedroom 1 had a comfort of 22 and a furnishing of 29, Bedroom 2 had a comforting of 22 and a furnishing of 29, and Bedroom 3 had a comforting of 28 and a furnishing of 31. I then went all the way to Dark Grove and got sage for Julia, and while I was there, I found Gus! He, he had vanished into Dark Grove. He was still kind of pissed that I like kept complimenting him, but he said to make up to, to like make up for it, he wanted an egg dippy. I had no clue how to make one, but I'll, I'll get to it eventually. On day 12, I figured out how to track and untrack quests, so I went in and I untracked the ones that I wouldn't get done for a while. I then went back to Julius to give her the sage that I found, and after giving it to her, she fully trusted me and told me to go build a dining room in the farmhouse. I didn't want to start building the farmhouse just yet because I still had a whole bunch of things to do at the other location, so I decided to not make the dining room and go fix up the rooms at the motel. I experimented with possible layouts for a while, but ultimately decided on the worst possible one. I put one bathroom in the middle of the place, I put a distillery in the bottom left corner, and surrounded the single bathroom with six bedrooms. I then stuffed all of the extra furniture that I had into a little corner of the motel that was completely off limits. All of the bedrooms ended up with a 16 comfort and a 13 to 14 furnishing. Afterwards, I went to High Lake and finally built not just one, but two campfires. I, I would later learn that having two campfires was completely useless, like utterly, absolutely useless, but let's just enjoy the fact that I have two of them for now. During the construction of the campfire, a glitch happened where a stack of five sitting logs was stuck on my screen, and I was able to duplicate them into my inventory, and this made a big ass mess in my inventory, so I just stuffed them into my storage. I then also built the dining room. Once all that was done, Julia told me to go build a kitchen where I would be able to cook all sorts of foods for all the guests, and she granted me access to her shop where I could buy more cooking recipes from. I finished the day by building the kitchen. On day 13, I began adding a single bedroom to the farmhouse, but I ended up stopping because I thought I was pretty close to getting new recipes to make better bedrooms, and I ended up being right. I talked to Finn and he ended up stocking the shit out of Pond Voyage with level 3 bedroom recipes, level 2 bathroom recipes, and level 2 dining room recipes. I obviously ended up buying them all. After all of this room and furniture building, I took all of the old furniture and tossed it into the grinder down in A24, and look at how much material I got. It was so nice to just like, get restocked. On day 14, I started wandering around High Lake just to see what was on the other side of the bridge, and I ran into a whole bunch of shit that needed to be repaired. Like, there were two different broadcasting satellite things, I don't know what they're actually called, and there was another rundown building that I cleaned up. Every day I had to travel to each location to assign new guests to their rooms, and honestly, it was getting to be so annoying. Like, I, I don't want to have to travel everywhere all of the time. 
Regardless, I traveled to Timber Crossing to update the rooms I had with their new level 3 bedroom furniture. Two of the rooms were now at 29 comfort and 30 furnishing, and the big ass room in the middle was at a whopping 39 comfort and 34 furnishing. Like, 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 like fucking rich people were gonna be staying here. Afterwards, I went down to the motel in A24 to add two more bedrooms and update the bathroom. Once that was done, I finished off my day at the farmhouse in High Lake making six level 3 bedrooms. I finished up the rooms on day 15 and I, 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 I hated the layout, but five of the bedrooms were at 23 comfort and 17 furnishing, and the big bedroom was at 28 comfort and 25 furnishing, so I figured that it was fine. Also, I had been finding like full meals around the map inside of like these hidden treasure chests that I put into my buffet to increase the food quality to 15. After all of this work and all of this hard effort, I realized that I had completely forgotten about a bathroom, so I moved the kitchen upstairs and rearranged all of the bedrooms. I spent the rest of the day just gathering materials and decided that I would try actually sleeping for once. I spent the morning of day 16 cooking up a storm, and by storm I mean a shit ton of apple bowls. I just kind of had all the- I, I took all my apples, threw them in a bowl. After stocking the buffet with all the apple bowls, I completely forgot what I was doing and literally just stood around for the rest of the day. When night hit, I went to sleep again in an effort to speed things up because it was only day 16 and I had already begun work on 3 out of the 5 resorts that were going to be available during this playthrough and I just felt like the game was already coming to a close, but but it, it obviously wasn't. I checked out some of the reviews I got on the farmhouse on day 17, and they weren't pretty. Like, I guess having one bathroom for seven people and only serving apple bowls just wasn't enough for them. I guess they have higher expectations than eating apples all the time. I wanted to improve my culinary rating, so I spent the entire day gathering ingredients and making all sorts of things to put in my buffet, like mashed potatoes and chamomile tea and mushroom soup. To my like legitimate surprise, on day 18, all the efforts I had put into cooking had actually started getting me 5 star reviews. I had also finally completed Finn's quest of hosting 6 guests, and this caused him to move on to the next place and for Barbara to want to see me again. Now, because I had like a weird feeling about Barbara, I put off seeing her until all of my chores were done. Those chores being like, going to all the resorts and signing new guests to all the rooms and gathering materials. It, it, it was a lot. I, I had a lot to do. I always have a lot to do. I, I'm stressed as fuck. By the time it was a completely pitch black night, I went to go see Barbara. She just wanted me to make her a bowl of some mushroom soup, and luckily I was like a messiah when it came to cooking mushroom soup, because I just had so much of it. So I grabbed a pre-made bowl that had been sitting in my storage for god knows how long, and gave it to her. After she ate it, she just left again. She, she was weird, but once she was gone, Julia came up to me, and it was like one of those beautiful moments in a romance anime. Like, we were on the bridge right above a waterfall, and Julia was about to confess her undying love for me. That obviously didn't happen, she just wanted me to find her some new ingredients to make new dishes. After she left, I slept right there on the bridge. On day 19, I upgraded the dining room in the farmhouse to level 2. Afterwards, I spent the rest of the entire day just getting my rounds in, you know, signing gas and gathering materials, I just did all that junk. I started off day 20 by removing almost everything in the motel to try to improve it, because it, 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 was, it was awful, and once that was done, I thought it looked way better than it did before, other than the fact that some guests will have to like walk through other people's rooms to get to their room, but I now had 11 bedrooms, and they were all level 3, so it was okay. Each of the rooms had a rating of 23 comfort, 19 furnishing, and 18 hygiene. I then went back to High Lake to find Sabine and ask her where I can get these unique ingredients that Julia was talking about. She told me that there was an area just north of here named Winterbury that had an old greenhouse that I could use to grow some crazy shit. So I just headed up there, and it was freezing, like there was a full-blown blizzard going on. While looking around, I ended up finding what would be the next resort, and it was fucking huge. It had two buildings that I would need to fill. Once I was done looking around, I ran into a mastiff named Jax. Out in the middle of icy nowhere, deep in the heart of Winterberry, resided Jax the Mastiff. His gentle and warm approach seemed deliberate for a place this cold. If anyone knew what a kindle a fire, it was probably Jax. He told me to go repair the ski cabin, so on day 21, I went and did exactly that. I went back to him and he told me that on top of food and hygiene I would also need to keep this place heated so f the fragile humans just wouldn't freeze to death. In order to do so, I would have to go to a place called Whitestone Bay and retrieve a specific pile of rocks. I made my way over there and found all sorts of cool ingredients here, like this place was way better than Winterberry that Sabina suggested. I found like peaches and honey and plums and shit, it was crazy. After filling my pockets, I grabbed the stones and found Barbara. Again. Unfortunately. She told me to go grab a radio receiver that was hidden somewhere inside the rundown lighthouse, and after finding it and giving it to her, she turned it on and flipped through a couple of channels until one came on about a bunch of people on a pond line cruiser. She then said she had somewhere to be and left in a hurry. Honestly, I don't know what her problem is, but it didn't matter because I ran into Wade! He basically said he felt underappreciated working for Big Cheese, so he ran away and that the only way he could possibly feel better was a nice bowl of French onion soup. I had no clue how to make it, 
but I had to learn for Wade. I returned to Jax on day 22 and he told me to build a utility room where I could put a heater in. After building the room, I began wandering around to see what else was in Winterbury and I ended up running into a front town shack with some ancient looking walrus or some something in it. It, it was creepy. I then went back to the utility room and put fuel into the heater. Once that was done, I went back to Jax and he told me that he missed the radio that used to be around when like the humans were here and everything was fine and dandy. So he told me to go fix the broadcasting station down in High Lake and he also gave me a lemon to give Julia. I began day 23 by building a lounge for all of the guests to just chill in. I then went over to the motel to edit it for a bit. All the new guests had such high expectations of my shitty ass resort, so I just kind of smushed all the bedrooms together in pairs of two in order to make them into level 4 bedrooms. They, they were kind of huge, they were kind of huge. Afterwards, I went over to the shack in Timber Crossing to do the same thing. My resorts were becoming pretty fucking awesome. And then after that, I went over to the farmhouse to do it again. But as I was doing this, all of my items kept duplicating for some reason. Like, I would grab something to place it down, and after placing it down, it would, like, stay in my hand or stay in my inventory. It was, it was really dumb. I kind of felt like this was cheating, so I restarted my game, and the issue still wasn't resolved. So, if any sort of dev is seeing this now, hopefully that issue's fixed. Uh... Thanks. I figured at the time the best way to handle this was to just start over, so I went back to the grinder and just got rid of everything to hopefully stop the duplicating. I spent all of day 24 adding new bedrooms and bathrooms and shit to the farmhouse, and in the end it turned out really nice actually. At the end of the day, I finally decided to give Julia that lemon, but right after I gave it to her, she started requesting even more stuff, so I went and got her those things as well. After I was done running around and being her little errand boy, she told me to go fix the greenhouse in Winterbury. I attempted to rebuild the greenhouse on day 25, but it required a bag of seeds, and since I had no clue where to find one, I started making bedrooms in a less ski cabin. Now, these bedrooms I was making were going to be huge. All of them were going to be a 7x4. Once the setup was done, things were looking absolutely horrible, and it caused me to just give up on it for now. I know I said it on day 16, I guess I forgot while I was recording this, but I felt like my game was coming really close to an end because I was already working on 4 out of the 5 resorts that were available in this game, so I decided that the only way I was going to actually reach day 100 was by sleeping at night from now on. On day 26, I began the steps for repairing the broadcast station, but I needed to get a whole bunch of random items again, those items being an old antenna dish, a record player, and a microphone. I went looking for the one in Winterbury right away just because it was in the area I was staying in at the moment, and I ended up finding the record player next to the walrus guy's house. I then went to the ski cabins and continued the awful layout upstairs. I spent the rest of the day gathering up more wooden shit. I started off day 27 by grabbing the microphone from the lighthouse in Whitestone Bay and grabbing the old antenna dish that I guess I already had in my storage. Afterwards, I did my rounds, went right back to the ski cabins, and reorganized everything. Like I made smaller bedrooms and added even more bedrooms. The layout was nicer, but it honestly still sucked, but it's whatever as long as I'm making money. In the morning, I went over to the other cabin to add a dining room for all of my lovely guests to eat their slop. Once that was done, I went over to High Lake and fixed up the broadcast center to be good as new. Now I could brainwash every single human that enters this valley and force them to not only do my bidding, but pay me more as well. Oh, what a dream. Anyways, I returned to Jax to let him know the good news and he gave me some recipes to make a movie theater. He then told me that Barbara has an odd scent about her and that I should go find her in High Lake, but honestly, I was getting completely sick of Barbara. She's very suspicious and I think she's doing all sorts of things behind my back. But regardless, I built a movie theater and went to bed. I spent a good portion of day 29 looking for that goddamn bag of seeds. Eventually I found it all the way in fucking Dark Grove next to a wrecked car. Now that I had it, I went over to the greenhouse and finally repaired it, and this place was stocked full of brand new ingredients. It had lemons, it had beans, it had garlic, peppers, carrots. I was about to make some tasty ass shit. At the end of the day, I decided to go visit Barbara in High Lake. She quite literally said like two sentences, and it was just to come meet her at some new place called Pinefall. Before I went to bed, since I was already in High Lake, I went over to Julia to let her know about the greenhouse, and she was very happy, like she was ecstatic. She gave me a bunch of new cooking recipes. I spent the morning of day 30 making all sorts of dishes, such as french fries, snappy beet chips, and citrus peach cooler. Afterwards, I made my way towards Pinefall, and if you thought the ski cabins in Winterbury were big, just you wait. Look at the size of these places. There, there are three of them, and each of them has two floors. It's, it's just way too big for my brain to handle. I met up with Barbara there, and she just wanted me to consult Finn about rebuilding Pinefall like I had been with the rest of the other places. But Finn was still in Winterbury, and my quest for him wouldn't be done until tomorrow, so I just went to sleep. I ran over to Winterbury the next day to find Finn and turn in my quest. From this quest, I got a pager which allows me to manage all of my resorts from anywhere in the game, and 
This was the best item in the game. I didn't have to waste half of my day just running around each location anymore. Needless to say, this was a game changer. Afterwards, I decided that before getting into rebuilding Pinefall, I should probably finish up Winterbury, so I stayed here and upgraded the utility rooms to level 2. I spent the morning of day 32 making a kitchen and then spent the entirety of the rest of the day upgrading all the bedrooms. I continued adding furniture to these bedrooms on day 33. Once that was done, I went back to Pinefall and spent the rest of the day gathering up all of its resources. On day 34, I decided that since getting valuables and materials has been taking up all of my time, I spent the next 10 days purely just gathering resources so that I can be fully prepared for anything and everything that comes my way for hopefully the rest of the game. During this time, on day 39, I noticed a staff section for each cabin, like in like the little menu thing where I manage all the, the, the bedrooms, and I need to figure this out. Managing all of these resorts by myself is just killing me, mainly because I hate cooking. The first thing I did on day 45 was turn in the final mission I had for the motel. I ended up getting a cozy sweater. I then analyzed my haul and just check out how much shit I had now. It, it was absurd. I had a lot of ingredients, so I moved most of them into my storage because I, I just had way too much food. Like, it filled my entire storage and I still didn't have enough room for all of it. Once I was done, I threw on my cozy sweater and now I look like somebody important. Now I look like a businessman. A business bear. At the end of the day, I finally went and talked to Finn about getting the Pinefall Resorts up and going, and he told me to rebuild at least one of them, but since I had so many materials, I just went ahead and rebuilt them all. I went up to Barbara on day 46 to tell her that everything was rebuilt, and in return she told me about her entire life story, which honestly I could care less about, but just look at how young she was. Okay, I'm stopping the narration for a minute, oh my god, Barbara was fine back then. Oh my god, Barbara was fine back then. Barbara was fine back then. I ended up listening through like three different cutscenes and it was just a whole lot of story just for her to say that things were cool and now they're not. Afterwards, she told me to go talk to Ipswich about a museum. I went over to Ipswich the next day to see what was up about this museum and he gave me a chunk of unpolished steel that resembled a feather to take to Charlotte. I went over to her and she said that she could turn it into something cool for the humans to fawn over, but she would first need 50 goddamn charcoal lilies 50 of them so i spent the rest of the night picking flowers i finished gathering up all the lilies on day 48 and watched charlotte turn the chunk of steel into something cool and by something cool i mean she just named it steel feather i went back to barbara and she told me to build a museum so i got to work i didn't actually get to work until day 49 and at some point i decided to check pond voyage and this place was stocked like it had level 4 bathroom recipes level 5 bedroom recipes and level 3 kitchen recipes I then went and talked to Finn and the guy on the other side was getting a little too comfortable talking with me and ended up saying some shit that his boss obviously did not like. He was replaced with an AI for the rest of the conversation. After that really awkward conversation, I built a museum and talked to Barbara and she said we needed to raise 50,000 fucking coins for this for like an investment of sorts. So I spent the next four days just sitting in our house, racking up coins until on day 54, I finally reached our total of 50,000 coins. This process took so goddamn long because I had given up on both the farmhouse and the ski cabins because it was just such a pain in the ass to cook. I, I hated cooking in this game. I gave Barbara the coins and she told me the rest of her story. Shit, I'm trying to remember the voice. The regime. <laughs> God, what was the voice I used? The regime fell and everything came crashing down after it. No one came back for us. For a while, I wasn't even sure there was anyone left who could. The world collapsed. Our world collapsed. All that was left were rundown buildings and piles of garbage. I feel like I'm just kind of talking like... Anyways. And me alone. Ever since... God, she looks so fine, oh my goodness. After listening, I kind of felt bad for her, like I know I've been saying a whole I've been talking a whole lot of shit this entire time, but I kind of felt bad. She lost like everything when shit went crazy, but I got over it very fast once I remembered that that piece of dialogue, that little cutscene, cost me 50,000 coins. She told me that the lighthouse in Whitestone was a disgrace to all of our hard efforts and that there was a lens to rebuild the lighthouse down on the beach. The only issue was that it was behind a locked fence, so she gave me a crowbar and told me to go grab it. I went all the way down to the beach and got the lens. I also noticed that there was a lone boat at the end of the dock. This this isn't important now, but it'll be important later. 
I then fixed up the lighthouse and returned to Barbara to see what was next, but she wasn't home. She wasn't there. I ended up searching for her everywhere, but I just could not find her. I went all the way over to Oliver to ask if she took a bus, but she he said she didn't. I then went and asked Sabine if she had seen Barbara, and she had seen her walking towards the beach, so I headed over there on day 55 and came to a cold realization. Sitting on the moldy wooden deck in front of a hank was a small, colorful postcard. On the back it read, Dear Miss Barbara Ferrier, Thank you for contacting Pond Voyage about an exciting expansion opportunity in Silver Valley. A representative will be sent on site at your earliest convenience. Although the people of Silver Valley have always been a welcoming and hospitable community, we appreciate the severity of renovations required in the area and welcome your assistance in rebuilding your beloved home. Your contributions to our development efforts will not go unrecognized. Upon completion of your premium partnership duties, you'll be eligible for a one-way ticket aboard our world-class cruise liner. We look forward to offering you the escape of a lifetime. She was the one that called Finn here, and it just, it just fucking left. After all of my hard work, and after all of the 12 plus hour shifts I was putting in, she had stolen all of my credit and just dipped. I figured this is what it was like to have like a really bad manager, so I vowed to never work for anybody else ever again. I was going to be my own boss and never get screwed over by someone ever again. At the end of the day, I went to ask Jax about the walrus guy in the broken down shack, but in order to do that, I had to complete a different quest for him first. I had to make him some plum snaps. I was still completely stunned by what Barbara did, but I had to move on and get back to work. So on day 56, I upgraded the kitchen in Winterbury and got to cooking. I ended up spending the entire day cooking and just trying to figure out where I could get ingredients like cheese and milk and bread and pasta. Like, like where, where, where is all that stuff? I have no clue. I ended up going over to Julia on day 57 to see if she needed anything and she actually did. She said she would help me cook things for guests. But I had to go through a rigorous test first, that being make a cheesecake. Since I was pretty sure that this had to do with the staff section of the game, like I could hire her, I had to get this done like immediately. But instead of rushing to finish the quest like I should have, I spent the rest of the day upgrading the bedrooms in the farmhouse to level 5. I started off day 58 by buying everything I would need to complete all of the food quests that I had. I then went over to High Lake and spent the rest of the day cooking them all. On day 59, I gave Julia the cheesecake she had requested. Deeming Hank an acquired taste, Julia decided to offer her cooking services. She would not be using her own kitchen, of course, but would require a special station. If any delicious scraps just so happened to fall off the countertop during cooking, it wouldn't have been bothered Hank. Not at all. I can now hire Julia to cook for all of the guests, and this this was the turning point in my journey. I didn't need to I, I didn't need Barbara. I could do everything on my own. I ended up tearing down everything in the farmhouse and just completely restarting the layout, but in order to continue building all the new rooms that I wanted, I needed a whole bunch of silk for these brand new beds. So I went over to Ipswich to get some, and he ended up making a new shop for me in Pinefall to make it easier to get. I spent the next three days completely reimagining the farmhouse, like, like I, re I remade all of the bedrooms, made a better kitchen and dining room, and upgraded the camp outside. I ended day 62 by assigning Julia to her stand and working out what food she was going to be making. Originally, I was going to be paying her like way below minimum wage, but I had to pay her 720 coins every day just for this place, just to keep it up. Like, like what, what is this? I wanted to see if anybody around the map had any missions that I had missed, so I went over to Wade on day 63 and gave him the French onion soup that he had been dying for. With unmatched enthusiasm, Wade offered Hank his garbage collection services. His speedy little feet were great for grabbing any litter left behind by lazy guests. In return, he would receive a fair wage and perhaps, for the first time, some honest recognition for his talent. I can now hire way to collect valuables for me, and this was awesome because I had been so low on them for like the entire game. I've, I've just I've been buying all the cheap shit, now I can buy the expensive shit. I then went over to my father, Tony, and accidentally told him about a gift that I made him. I, I didn't make him a gift. He really wanted it, so I guess I was going to have to figure out a way to get him something. I went over to Gus on day 64 and gave him his egg dippy. Always the undeniable people possum, Gus had offered his services as a concierge. All he asked for was a little stand through which he could take care of business, of course. A perfect position for such a charming individual. I can now hire Gus to assign guests to the resorts for me. This, it wasn't like a big job, but at this point in the game, it was getting really annoying to do it. 
Afterwards, I went and got my father a small wooden carving of myself, and he was very, very happy. So happy, in fact, that he gave me his collection of ball bearings that he'd been collecting over the last few years. Once I had his balls, I got a new quest, and it was to get Charlotte 15 charcoal lilies to turn the balls into art for the museum. I decided not to do that yet, and to instead go over to Winterbury and completely rework it like I did with the farmhouse. I tore up everything and made everything smaller and fit nicer. You know, the works. My only issue is that there were like 18 rooms now and I didn't have nearly enough mahogany to make all of the furniture. I bought a bunch of silk on day 65 and then spent the rest of the day tossing shit into the grinder. Not having enough mahogany wood for all of these, well, like all these rooms, was a huge hindrance on my gameplay. Like, like, like a huge hindrance on my gameplay. It was such a hindrance that I ended up spending the next 10 entire days just gathering up all the mahogany wood on the entire map, and then using all that wood in seconds to make furniture. It was an awful process. It, it was awful because you could only find so much mahogany on the map in a given day. Like, the max amount was maybe 50 wood, and when everything costs 8 mahogany to make, it takes a long ass time to get shit done. Regardless of how long it took, things looked absolutely amazing. Like, I loved how everything came together in the end. Sure, it was a little cramped, but as long as I'm making money, it doesn't matter to me. During this time, on day 70, I came to a horrible, horrible realization. I just read, the, 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 the $50,000 that I raised for Barbara to help with investments and stuff, she took and just left. She robbed me of 50000 fucking dollars. Are you kidding me? I was pissed, like, like, extremely pissed, but I continued on with my work. I just, I had to throw Barbara out of my mind. Towards the end of day 75, I noticed that the walrus guy had a quest. His name was Cian, and he wanted a whole bunch of honey, so I was going to go get it for him. On day 76, I finally gave Jax those plum schnapps that he's been waiting for. Jax offered Hank his upkeep services to make sure the fire never went out. For that purpose, he used... For that purpose, he would use his tried and tested steam machine, the best in the business. Wherever the cold reached... Wherever the cold reached... Jax would be there to keep the guests snug as a bug in a rug. I can now hire Jax to keep up with the heating on all of the resorts. It was cool, but I had so much fuel that it honestly wasn't even worth the money to pay him to do it. Like, I could just do it myself. I then asked him what he knew about Cien, and it turns out that he's not a walrus whatsoever. He's an elder bear cat that's been sitting inside of that rundown shack for a very long time. After talking with Jax, I grabbed the honey for Cien, and he gave me the broken mirror in return. I then told him about what Jax had told me, and he just said that he wanted some hearty soup. I already had some in my inventory, so I gave him some. Oh yes, there's an- <laughs> no, this is a... Oh yes, there isn't anything in this world quite as magnificent as a shady branch on a hot summer morning. At the end of the day, it's still the only you that- It's still only you that- At the end of the day, it's still only you that needs to be satisfied, so be mindful of the branches in life is a good idea. Sometimes, the best thing you can do for yourself is nothing at all. But as quickly as I learned that philosophy only works when you're content with the little that you're born with. My regularly scheduled nothing was abruptly interrupted one day by those that are never content. They chased me for hours and finally cornered and trapped me. I was suddenly just a trophy, something to be taken and sold. Forever doomed to a life of nothing by force. He basically told me he was trafficked here and too much time had passed for him to want to move on. He then told me about strange forces watching over this place and to go talk to three horned devils by the sea if I wanted to learn more. I went over and talked to these three horned devils and they said they wouldn't tell me anything unless I got them each a peach cobbler. I baked them all a peach cobbler on day 77 and gave it to them. I then told the flight about my dream that I had at like the very beginning of this video and they pretty much said that I've been targeted by the bird god and that it's already too late for me and that I was going to be hunted down and murdered. I told the flight they were full of shit, but instead of offering me like a rebuttal or like a, sh a shot back at me, they just told me to go find evidence of their own god's existence, but why am I finding them evidence? Like, I, I don't give a shit if your god exists or not. Oh, I forgot to mention that I hired Gus to take care of all the guest requests from now on. Sorry for this like little random button. I spent the entirety of day 78 just doing the boring old business work. On day 79, I headed over to the cave in Dark Grove that was supposed to be the home of this so-called bird god. I went in to begin exploring around and almost immediately, I found a red feather just lying on the floor. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little spooked when I found this, but I decided to continue exploring anyway. After a while, all I found were some locked doors that needed keys, so on day 80, I went back to the flight and they were just as surprised as I was over this feather. This is it. This proves everything. We knew it. 
You are right to be scared. Your body felt it before. Your mind caught up. That fear in your spine was just your survival instinct trying to save you. If only it knew better than to even try. The bird god is real. That bloody prince of darkness lives. He roams the dark caves. We knew we saw him with our own eyes. We did. He is a dark figure. Bloodshot eyes and giant scaly wings. His monstrous wings shed bloody feathers every day. Making way for new ones. His sharp claws and needle-like jaws can even tear through... Um... A coconut! Yes! And he will bring wrath upon this world once again. All hail the bird god. They gave me a fuzzy charm key and told me to go looking for the bird god, like, in the cave through some of the locked doors. But since this was all a little too spooky for me, I instead went back to Winterbury and continued to work on the bedrooms upstairs. After a while of, you know, building rooms and gathering all of my courage, I went back to the cave, back to the locked door, and went through it. On the other side was the bird god. But this guy had a huge stick up his ass. He kept treating me like I was some sort of slave here to just do his bidding. He requested some snappy beet chips, so I made them right away on day 81 and brought them back to him. And as I'm reading this right now, like, reading through my script, I now know why he treats me like a slave. Anyways, he decided I was worthy enough to hear his story. I was chosen as next in line for the divine throne by my loyal followers. They came to my home and took me on my regal trip towards my new kingdom, post haste. It was quite a brutal journey, even by servant standards. For the good of the realm and my own protection, the guards brought me here to the Imperial uh, Dark Cellar. Here I would await the ceremony preparations to be complete. I should be summoned for my coronation shortly. They do like to take their time. Basically, he had been trafficked just like Sian and believed that he was like the second coming of Jesus Christ or something. Sorry again, but I'm gonna intervene really quick just to say that since this is since I was like making a good amount of money in the game, I decided that the last 20 days are just going to be dedicated to finishing all the quests. I went back to the flight on day 82 to tell them everything that I had found and what had happened, and they instantly believed that their bird god wasn't a god at all, since they haven't had any sort of dreams since the fire. But they also told me that there was a bear that died the night of the fire. I was obviously intrigued by this since the only bears in the valley are myself and my mother, so I ran straight home to ask my mother about this other bear. I've always told you that your name came from the spirits, Hank. Well, in a way it did. It was your brother who picked it. His name was Artie, and he was the best kid anyone could ask for. Ah, uh, look at this. This is my brother, and my father is obviously out of the picture. All the nonsense and myths about the gods, they're all stories to scare children. But I won't lie, and I say I didn't pray to them that evening. Oh, that night. The night of the fire, the universe was merciless. This guy felt so heavy, even before the sunset you could tell death was in the air. Artie was afraid the fire would spread and he left to save his friends. He never came back. All we found was his burnt hat and torn clothes, pierced by these black stone needles. The fire went on for over a week. We ran and ran until we managed to escape here in this little corner of the woods. This is where we finally stopped to rest. It was just the two of us from then on, trying to survive. You, me, and the pain that kept us company for all these years. I shouldn't have let him go. So I had a brother that died the night of the fire, and all that was found were his clothes and an onyx time that was lodged into them. I remember seeing like a door in the caves that needed an onyx time to be opened, so I rushed over there on day 83, opened it, and came face to face with a real god. Oh! Oh! What is that? Alright, I have one question. Why, why do the humans in this game not throw their trash away? Like, why isn't there an option for me to buy a garbage can and have the humans throw away their trash? Because I, I have to pay this little rack guy, like, thousands of dollars every day to pick up all the trash. And it's just it just costs way too much. Just, I can just get a garbage can and have the humans throw it away. Like, like what's up with that? Okay, or ask about people. That works.
Oh, I get to ask another question. Okay, another question. Why can I never find any mahogany wood, like, anywhere on this on this world? Like, anywhere at all. Like, like I can go to the world map. I can go here. I can find, I can find uh, the, the mahogany, like, two places here, a couple of places here, and a couple of places here. And that is it. That is it. After, after one day's worth of searching, I can get this up to about maybe 40. And that's it. And then I, that, cause, cause each wardrobe costs eight to make. So I can only make like, what's the math? What's the math? Uh, I can only make like four wardrobes. It's, it's crazy is what it is. Tell me about that. Okay. Animals. Oh, I, I get a third question, I guess. I thought it was one question. Okay. I get a third question. I'm, I'm running out of things to ask about. Uh, oh, what 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 happened to my father? Because in that picture that my mama showed me, he was obviously burnt out of it. But like, what happened to him? Okay, gods. Yeah. ideal universe humans would not have to exist yet they do which proves just as far from ideal as this one truly is but in actuality nothing is universal and neither are humans some are indeed born with capacities for more than just self-interest whether that can be considered good or bad depends on who you address the question to in the same terms neither are all animals strictly beneficial to the precise flow of nature some are innately built with destructive tendencies. In reality, no creature born from disorder will ever adhere to one rigid set of st structures. Either are capable of both good and bad. As it, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what, what the hell is it? As it is governed by the gods, who are by their very nature the fruit of this orderly chaos. I, Harris, is it? it oh my god. I, Eris, exist through disorder and the abundance of fear and innately carries. Vara nurtures regret and envy, both in ample reserve throughout this world. Erebos reflects both wisdom and skill, although not exactly in high demand as of late. Tyne per perpetuates violence and ap apathy. Tyne perpetuates violence and apathy, forces that have no trouble thriving on their own, although suspiciously dormant for a while. And Kai, the oldest of us, who exists through the accum, and Kai, the oldest of us, who exists through the accumulation, Jesus, and Kai, the oldest of us, who exists through the accumulation of order and light, both of which have been extremely dim in recent times. That is how the universe is governed in harmony, or perhaps how it should be. I saw that picture of a bear. There's a bear god. There's a bear god. I want to meet the bear god. After everything, he gave me an onyx stone and told me to find someone who knows what it is. So I obviously went over to the smartest guy I know, Oliver. He told me the only thing that's going to get through that stone is a jeweler's kit, which he just so happens to sell. Now that I had a jeweler's kit, all I needed to do was find a use for it. So after a bit of looking around and searching through the web, I found a place to use it in the top right of High Lake. I opened up the path on the other side and there was this huge bird, like like massive, massive bird. Like, like this was the bird god, not that other guy in the fucking caves. This was the bird god. His name was Kai. I asked him what had happened to him, and he used a bunch of big words like embodiment and permeated and dominance, all just to say that he was stuck. He started talking about this guy named Thine. Apparently this guy was the cause of the fire that happened like 15 years ago. He basically turned the humans against each other to gain more power himself. Luckily, humans also provided an opposing force to this, and thus, the fire broke out. A clear night had fallen over the valley. The darkness settled over all the humans, animals, and nature in this corner of the world. The tension had been building up over days and months and years was not visible, but perceptible. Without a moment of hesitation, the violence erupted. Brutality and rage exploded with savage momentum engulfing everything in their path. Humans fighting each other, 
answering violence with violence with little regard for any of their surroundings. Invisible to the mortal eye, my confrontation with thine had begun. A celestial skirmish that would determine more than just an outcome of this clash. It would define the shape of this world in its immediate future. If violence and pain would continue their reign, there would be little left to share between either humans, animals, or the gods. I did, however, catch a glimpse of someone else in that moment. Your brother was indeed present at the time of our conflict. He was his his was a valiant effort to aid the victims of this wave of violence. But his outer shell proved but his outer shell proved too fragile to endure the brutality that ensued. Indeed, Dine struck with the force so powerful, almost nothing could confront it. In the aftermath of our clash, everything turned white as it struck by lightning. Then dark, as if it had been the last sliver of light to ever exist. The battle had no clear winners, only unmistakable losers on all sides. I do not know what Thine's fate was, but I, I do not know what Thine's fate was, but I do know he did fare slightly better than I had if only just. I had collapsed here at the top of the hollow gate, too weak to rise. I know Thine had some residual strength, for it was he that imprisoned me in these onyx shackles. And to make sure I could not leave by any means, he locked me behind his dark sorcery. Placing an onyx fawn at the entrance as an unbreakable bond, the mirror of his youthful innocence. And so this is where I began my slumber, trying to recover what little power I could until someone, somehow, could break the stone and break the curse. Damn, that sucks. That sucks a lot, Kai. My bad. After all of that, I decided that it was only best to free the thing that provided my brother and the valley a shield of protection. The skies have cleared. The burden of the dark is slowly lifting. The light is free to dance one more, once more. I grieve for your brother's life, as I do all souls that are taken prematurely. But I am grateful for your heart, as it has achieved an ambition greater than its promise. And that does indeed fill my own, with great purpose. Damn, what the hell? What do I... What... What do I do now? I just met two gods and we're just gonna call it a day? Like... Like what? And that was it. All of this god nonsense was over just like that. Like, no more quests, no more cutscenes, nothing. All of it ended so prematurely in my opinion, but thankfully there's gonna be a new update very soon that will hopefully expand upon what all of this is, because as of now, I know that there's a whole bunch of gods and one of them wants to see the world fall apart and burn. I then went back to my normal work for the last 15 days. I gathered materials, built some new rooms, finished the museum, completely finished it, finished Winterbury, and just barely didn't finish Pinefall. The last thing that like actually did happen was when I finished Finn's last quest for Pinefall, and I had to say goodbye. No! Finn, don't go! Finn, don't go! No! Finn! No! Finn! No! Finn! No, he's gone! He said, good luck, buddy! Finn is gone.